Good afternoon. It's been more than four months since Alberta reconsidered its, uh, excuse me, recorded its first case of COVID-19. Thanks to our outstanding pandemic response plan, the brilliant work by Dr. Hinshaw and her team at Alberta Health and uh, the AHS team, and thanks to tremendous effort and sacrifice by all Albertans, the outbreak peaked in late April, well below our modeling projections and hospitalization capacity, and it has been trending down downwards ever since. Alberta started lifting health restrictions on May the 1st, and now uh, more than two, we're more, more than two months into our relaunch plan. From the beginning, we kept uh, more of our economy operating than many other jurisdictions in Canada and around the world, and we started reopening more and sooner than most. It's a tribute to the effectiveness of our health system and Albertans' strong sense of personal and civic responsibility that we did so well containing the virus under the least restrictive public health orders in Canada. Key to our success was the highest per capita testing rates of any province and among the highest in the world. It's the biggest and best testing system in Canada and for weeks now, testing has been available to any Albertan whether or not they have symptoms. In combination with our contact tracing app, Canada's first and for two months our only tracing app across the country, we have the best early warning system in the country which allows us to jump on outbreaks and move quickly to stamp them out. We also moved early and effectively to secure our airports and borders against imported infections coming from international travel. And we learned quickly how to protect people in institutional settings after the early outbreaks at seniors care facilities and packing plants. Of course, every one of the 161 lives lost so far has been a tragedy for their families their friends and for our whole province. But perhaps the best measure of our success in managing the pandemic is that Alberta's rate of 37 deaths per million uh, r remains far, far below the national average of 233. Even in long-term care facilities, which have accounted for three quarters of all COVID deaths in Alberta, we have fared much better than Canada as a whole with a fatality rate of 23 million compared, uh, uh, sorry, one per 23 million compared to 143 million in the rest of the country. To keep our numbers low and keep all of us safe as possible, I implore Albertans to remain vigilant and disciplined. We saw large crowds gathering this weekend uh, at Sylvan Lake and understandably with the nice weather, the people very close together. I've seen that myself in parks and have seen people in crowded areas, including grocery stores, not wearing masks, and that kind of conduct, unfortunately, could jeopardize the progress that we have made. We are not done with COVID, but we are learning how to live with it. And our future success depends entirely on not letting our guard down. We need only look south of the border to see how bad things could be. Uh, thankfully, New York and some other states uh, that were hard hit early on have managed to turn the corner on infections, hospitalizations and fatalities. But the virus has taken off in many other states and the overall American numbers are amongst the worst in the world, certainly much, much higher than Alberta's. Yesterday, Florida reported over 15,000 new cases in a single day and many states like Arizona, Florida, Mississippi are facing potential shortages of ICU beds in the days ahead. That's the worst case scenario and we have to avoid it here in Alberta. The reasons behind this are clear. Not enough care was taken to maintain physical distancing, to embrace widespread testing, and to follow the other basic protocols that we've put in place here. So I urge our American cousins to look north and learn from our successes. Many of us have friends and family in US hotspots and we're worried about them. But another major worry for us is the North American economy. Of course, the US is by far our largest trading partner in the world but both of our economies have been hammered by COVID-19 and both of our recoveries depend on getting business humming again and getting people back to work, neither of which can happen in places suffering large outbreaks. Overall, the current state of pandemic in Alberta can be characterized as stable. As of yesterday, we have recorded a total of 8,826 cases since it began. Of those, uh, 7,989 have recovered.
and there are currently uh, 676 known active cases within Alberta's population of 4.4 million. Last week, we reached a milestone of half a million tests, and we're currently averaging about 7,000 tests per day during stage two, although I understand we did as many as, I think, 10,000 on Saturday, which would be a record. Testing remains uh, a cornerstone of our relaunch plan, and we continue expanding testing capacity. This includes piloting asymptomatic testing at pharmacies across Alberta and investing in targeted serology testing to get more data on how widespread the infection has been, including among people who never knew that they had it. Uh, from the start, we have been equally focused on protecting both lives and livelihoods, recognizing that the medical risks of COVID-19 must be balanced against the social, economic, and mental health risks of disrupting every other aspect of our lives. Risk assessment and risk management is built into our re relaunch plan with public health triggers designed to guide Alberta's actions through the stages of relaunch. The first trigger is change in the number of hospitalizations. During stage two of relaunch, the change in hospitalizations needs to be stable or declining and under 5% for two consecutive weeks for us to move to the next stage. I'm happy to report today that hospitalizations have been trending downwards from the start of relaunch over two months ago, and in fact decreased by another half a percentage point over the past couple of weeks. There are currently just 45 COVID patients in hospital in Alberta, which is less than half the peak of 111 back at the end of April. The second trigger is the percentage of COVID-19 ICU beds that are occupied during stage two of uh, relaunch, less than half of ICU beds dedicated to COVID-19 can be occupied. Well, today, there are just uh, 10 cases in ICU, far down from the peak of 23 back on the 1st of May. And we're sitting at about 20% of capacity. Not unexpectedly, we have seen a rise, less than 20%, in the number of active cases in the province over the past couple of weeks. Uh, this was perhaps somewhat inevitable as we reopened many activities and reduced restrictions on how people can interact. It's also no surprise that the demographics of infection have changed with a higher ratio of younger people testing positive for COVID-19. 55% of our current active cases are under the age of 40, and we are seeing a particular increase in those between the ages of 20 and 39. The flip side of this is that fewer older people are getting infected in relative terms and it's seniors of course, particularly those with underlying health problems who are most at risk of serious illness uh, and death from this disease. The average age of Albertans who have died from COVID continues to be 83. So what the data may be saying is that younger Albertans have taken to heart their civic duty to protect our elders and whatever risks they are taking to get back to work to play and to live more or less normal lives, they're taking prudent precautions around those who are most at risk. But we can't take that for granted. To further help everyone do their part to manage the pandemic, we've created an interactive online map and an email notification system so that all of us can track the number of active cases in our communities. Currently, there are no regions subject to this enhanced classification under which enhanced public health measures could be imposed to reduce risks. All regions are currently classed as open, but uh, for three which are on the watch list because uh, there are at least 10 active cases and more than 50 active cases per 100,000 in those regions. You can see those on the map here. Dr. Hinshaw and Alberta Health Services are working closely with partners in these areas to monitor the virus. The current outbreak at the Misericordia Hospital in Edmonton is concerning as Alberta's first significant uh, outbreak in an acute care setting of which there are more than 100 such facilities across Alberta. As they've done successfully during previous outbreaks in continuing care facilities, health officials are working hard to contain the spread and to protect patients, staff uh, and physicians and, and other health care workers. Widespread testing is underway Outbreak protocols are in place and all patients in the hospital continue to receive the care that they need. 
I have complete confidence in the hospital infection control team and our public health cl clinicians to respond effectively. And I remind Albertans that we have a tremendous record in infection control and acute care over the first four months of the pandemic. And we are constantly learning and getting better at managing this disease wherever it crops up. So while relaunch is well underway, our public health response remains strong. Public health officials continue to test broadly and respond swiftly anytime a new case is detected. Dr. Hinshaw and her colleagues are watching every new case and outbreak closely and constantly assessing the risk to Albertans. We are prepared in the event that a second wave does arrive. This spring, Alberta Health Services uh, freed up beds rapidly to ensure we had capacity to address a potential surge in new cases. So we've done the drill and our health system is ready and able quickly to expand COVID-19 capacity if we see a surge in cases later this summer or in the fall. We all have a role to play in this fight. We all have a personal responsibility as Albertans, parents, friends and neighbours to do the right thing and to follow the public health guidance. Masking is a crucial part of this, of this guidance. Wearing a non-medical mask when it's difficult to maintain physical distancing is one way that we can all continue to limit the spread of COVID-19. I've been asked uh, many times if Alberta will make masks mandatory. To quote Dr. Hinshaw, we can't enforce our way out of the pandemic. And the vast majority of Albertans, I don't think, need to be told to do the right thing. But we all know by now that it's our civic duty to reduce our risk of exposure and transmission as much as possible. And that means wearing a mask in crowded indoor public spaces where physical distancing is not possible. To make that as easy as possible for everyone, I'm pleased to announce today that Alberta's government is providing another 20 million protective, protective masks for free distribution, once again with the support of uh, private sector partners. We are the only jurisdiction in Canada to undertake a province-wide distribution of free non-medical masks. Throughout the pandemic, Albertans have responsibly managed risk and made personal sacrifices to help control the spread and keep themselves and others safe. Although research labs around the world are racing to find treatments and vaccines and encouraging results are all already showing up in some patient data, we're going to be living with COVID-19 for many months to come. The economic and social costs of a return to blanket restrictions would be deep and painful. And so we urgently need to get our people and our economy working again. So I implore Albertans to keep doing your part to contain the virus so we can all keep moving forward through the relaunch strategy and accelerate implementation of our recovery plan. Thank you, and I'd now like to invite uh, Health Minister Tyler Shandro to provide more details on today's announcement of Phase 2 of Alberta's uh, free mass distribution program. Well, thank you, Premier, and uh, thank you, and good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. In, uh, in June, we launched a program to distribute 20 million non-medical face masks to Albertans. It's the only program of its kind in Canada, and it's been very well received. Albertans picked up masks from our restaurant partners at a w McDonald's Canada, and Tim Hortons, and as well from a wide range of other community partners. I'm happy to announce a second distribution of another 20 million non-medical masks. Free masks have been restocked at our partner restaurant locations across the province, and they're now available for pickup. The second distribution uh, includes some changes to expand the distribution and provide more options. Beginning today, Albertans can get masks at a drive through or at the counter, which expands the program to more than 700 restaurant locations. Now, this is something that Albertans asked for in June, and we listened. After consulting with our restaurant partners, we determined that in-store pickup could be done safely. People also asked for more masks, and the restaurants asked us to simplify the packaging process for their employees to help with this. So this time, there will be eight masks per package or per person instead of four. As well, I encourage Albertans to pick up masks for their family and for their friends who can't get to a restaurant or drive through to get their own masks. Please coordinate with family and friends and pick up your masks when you're sure that no one else is already doing so for you. 
Masks will be available at restaurants while supplies last. We've also adjusted the second distribution to make more masks available through local authorities or organizations which support vulnerable Albertans. Now that includes long-term care and supportive living facilities, other seniors facilities, community groups and social service organizations throughout the province. We're also giving more masks to municipalities without easy access to a partner restaurant, as well as First Nations communities and Métis settlements as well. We're providing masks to courthouses and libraries, and we're providing 2.5 million masks to more than 1,000 places of worship throughout the province. And finally, 4 million masks are going to 20 transit services across the province, including in Edmonton, Red Deer, and Calgary. To support this distribution, 7-Eleven Canada has volunteered to ship masks from government warehouses directly to each participating transit service. So uh, thank you to 7-Eleven Canada for that assistance. And thank you to our restaurant partners, franchise owners, their staff members, and our municipal and community partners who are volunteering their time, volunteering their effort to distribute these masks to Albertans who need them. Altogether, we're handing out 20 million masks in this second distribution. Adding these masks to those provided uh, in June, oh, adding uh, these masks in, in this announcement to those um, uh, provided to Albertans in June, the total is 40 million free masks for Albertans. We're proud to be the first and uh, still only province in Canada to do this. We strongly advise Albertans to follow the physical distancing guidelines and to wear a mask when that's not an option, such as on transit. Now, it's not mandatory at a provincial level, but it's important based on the advice of our Chief Medical Officer of Health. And we're the only province that's backing it up, uh, backing up that uh, advice with free masks for everyone who wants them to socialize their use throughout Alberta. Albertans have done a great job of containing the spread of COVID uh, up until now. And, it's why we've had some of the best results in the world with a lighter regulatory approach than most other places. But it's critical to keep in mind, as Premier said, our success does not mean that the pandemic has gone away. Uh, the, moment that we, um, uh, the moment that we start to act like it has, we're at risk here in Alberta bringing it back. So my message to Albertans is simple. You're doing a great job, so please uh, stay the course. Wash your hands frequently, maintaining physical distancing of two meters. Now, if you have respiratory symptoms, stay at home and limit contact with other people. Do the self-assessment on AHS's website and schedule a test as quickly as possible. You can be tested even if you don't have any symptoms. And a reminder to please download, as Premier mentioned, the, uh, to download and, and use the AV Trace Together contact tracing app as well. We're getting through this together, and it's up to all of us to keep each other safe, to keep our frontline health care professionals safe as well, and to keep uh, um, our, our community, keep our families safe. Uh, thank you very much, and I'd now like to uh, um, ask Dr. Hinshaw to, uh, to come and uh, provide her comments as well. Dr. Hinshaw. Thank you, Minister. With another 20 million non-medical masks being made available, I want to remind Albertans that when used properly, masks can protect others and help limit the spread of COVID-19. I am strongly recommending that all of us wear masks anytime we are out and can't maintain a two meter distance from others, especially in indoor spaces. Wearing a mask is a common sense precaution that should be part of everyone's new normal. There is detailed information available on alberta.ca to help anyone with questions about how to use and wear masks safely. The Premier, Minister and I have all talked about the fact that we all have a role in protecting each other. Masks are a part of our personal responsibility to manage the risk for ourselves and for others. Wearing one is the right thing to do and I know that Albertans pitch in and help their neighbours when there is a need. This is part of pitching in against COVID-19, just like Albertans supported each other through floods and fires in the past. Of course, masks are only one part of the public health approach. There is no single way to protect ourselves from COVID-19. No one measure alone will eliminate all risks of exposure. Rather, 
The key to limiting the spread is adopting all of the various public health measures in our daily routines at work, at home, and in our free time. We are monitoring the spread of COVID-19 closely and taking quick and appropriate action to identify cases and resolve outbreaks as quickly and safely as possible. Our health system has plans to expand our capacity quickly if needed and continues to make COVID-19 a top priority. Spread of the virus is growing, however, with 54 new cases on July 10th, 96 new cases on July 11th, and 80 new cases yesterday. There are also more cases with unknown sources now than there were a week ago. We cannot do this alone. We need each other to get through this. Every one of us has a role to play in keeping each other safe. We all need to take our shared responsibility seriously. The effectiveness of the measures put in place depend on how well we all continue to stay home when sick and get tested, physically distance, wash or sanitize our hands, wear masks, and follow all other public health guidance. This is the best way to protect ourselves and those around us. Thank you, and we're happy to take any questions you may have. Okay, operator, could you please put through the first caller? Thank you very much. The first call is from James Keller of the Globe and Mail. Please go ahead. Hi there. This is a message for uh, Dr. Hinshaw. I'm just wondering about the contract tracing app. There was this report from the Privacy Commissioner that raised some concerns, um, mostly lim like linked to the technical limitations in the iPhone version, which we all know about. Um, do you have any comments on those concerns, particularly you know this issue of having to leave the app open uh, opens up a, a privacy and security issue and do we know when that problem is going to be fixed? So absolutely, that has been a feature of the app on iPhones, the challenge that it functions only when it's in the foreground and the phone is open. Uh, that has been a concern that we have been working to resolve. I don't have a, an estimated time for that, but we'll absolutely um, agree that that is a concern that, that we have had from the beginning and, and work has been underway to try to address that. I, I think the Premier will also make a comment. Yes, I just wanted to add that we have been trying to resolve that problem, um, which requires cooperation from Google and Apple. Uh, unfortunately, the Government of Canada has told Google and Apple not to work with the Government of Alberta or other provincial governments on improving uh, the Trace Together app. Uh, they've done so because they say they want uh, uh, cooperation on a single national uh, platform but I don't, there isn't one, and uh, Alberta is chairing the uh, Council of the Federation Working Group on tracing apps for COVID-19. We have made repeat, repeated requests uh, for the federal government to remove their uh, barrier, their objection to uh, Google, Apple, and other major tech companies working directly with us to improve uh, the uh, functionality of the app. So uh, I will renew that call now here publicly. Um, every week we, we, uh, we press the, uh, the, the federal government to, uh, look, because at the end of the day, um, by standing in the way between us and the, uh, the large tech companies, they are re effectively reducing the functionality uh, of an app which can help us in the midst of a public health crisis. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Thank you. Sammy Hudis, Post Media. Hi there, Premier. Uh, you mentioned some of the public health triggers that the province is monitoring right now. Uh, just wondering, we've now been in stage two of relaunch for about a month. Is there a target date for stage three? Is it something you see potentially happening before the end of the summer? No, we don't have a target date. We have the uh, key public health triggers that I've reiterated today. Uh, I will uh, be meeting with Dr. Hinshaw and, and Minister Shandro later this week to discuss where we are at. But let me just say with the most recent data that Dr. Hinshaw uh, reported, which was as much as I think 96 uh, new identified infections on Saturday and, and 80 on, on 80 some on Sunday, um, that is uh, concerning. And so, uh, look, I would love to get to phase three. Uh, as quickly as possible, but that will be up to how uh, Albertans uh, conduct themselves I in the in the days and weeks to come. Uh, what I can tell you is we are moving forward with the economic recovery plan uh, because I am. I've always said we need to protect both lives and livelihoods. 
Uh, but at this stage, uh, we do not have a target date for, for uh, stage three on relaunch. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Lauren Krugel, Canadian Press. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I had a hockey question for Dr. Hinshaw, okay. um, and that is, um, should there be uh, new COVID-19 cases um, associated with um, gameplay uh, once that begins? Um, how granular will the information disclosed to the public be about that? I mean, would those be lumped in as, you know, a case in Edmonton, or would we know, um, you know, whether it's a player, what team, um, and um, while still maintaining confidentiality in, in those concerns? The uh, principle by which we have disclosed information to the public has always been uh, to be as transparent as possible, particularly where there is any risk to the public involved. We haven't had discussions yet around the granularity of disclosing data with respect to NHL play. Uh, and I think that the most important thing with respect to how we're monitoring that is uh, even before there are any cases, making sure that all of the measures that are being taken to ensure that spread is minimized, to protect the players, to protect the public, uh, that we are working very closely with the teams and with the NHL to ensure that those measures are being followed. Uh, so that in some ways is the most important metric to make sure public protection is happening. And with respect to that granularity of disclosure, uh, that will be uh, based on conversations that we'll have to have going forward. Um, but we will, of course, always, the other key principle when we have discussions about cases uh, is the principle of confidentiality. So we always keep both of those things in mind, uh, transparency with respect to public risk while maintaining confidentiality of cases. So we will be working with those two principles uh, with respect to any cases, whether it's the NHL or others. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Marie Vestel, La, La Devoir. Oui, bonjour, M. Kenny, c'est Marie Vastel au journal Le Devoir à Ottawa. Je voulais vous parler de la frontière euh, avec les États-Unis. Le mois dernier, vous vous êtes montré euh, impatient, si je peux dire, de voir la frontière réouverte. Le décret actuel euh, qui, qui la maintient fermée doit prendre fin dans une semaine. Donc, j'aimerais savoir, est-ce que vous souhaitez maintenant que la frontière soit réouverte la semaine prochaine? Dans quelles conditions? Est-ce qu'il devrait y avoir des, des paramètres, par exemple? Et est-ce que vous militez auprès de juges? Justin Trudeau ou du gouvernement fédéral pour que la frontière réouvre le 21 juillet? Non, effectivement, ce que j'ai milité, c'est pour une politique pour permettre une réouverture de, de, des voyages internationaux, y compris des États-Unis à l'avenir. Je ne sais pas c'est quelle date précise qui, qui, euh, qui va conformer à la situation de santé publique, mais il faut... Il faut Faire, euh, il faut développer un protocole pour les voyages sûrs. Ça veut dire qu'il euh, y a d'autres juridictions à, à, dans le monde qui ont mis en place la capacité à faire les tests pour le COVID-19 euh, aux aéroports, par exemple, où ils ont fait euh, euh, la permission pour les étrangers à déposer une épreuve euh, de ce qu'ils ont testé négatif pour euh, le COVID-19. Alors, euh, je crois qu'il faut euh, penser à l'avenir euh, où nous pouvons revenir à euh, les voyages euh, euh, d'une façon, d'un cadre euh, euh, sécuritaire en point de vue de santé publique. Euh, évidemment, je ne veux pas maintenant, aujourd'hui, juste à, à permettre n'importe quoi en ce qui concerne le, les frontières avec les États-Unis, étant donné euh, la vague des nouveaux, euh, des nouveaux cas aux États-Unis. Mais l'Europe et les autres pays ont mis en place certains euh, protocoles en ce qui concerne les voyages et je, 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 je crois qu'il faut faire le travail euh, politique à cet égard. And I'm going to have to run uh, and leave the next questions to Minister Shandro and uh, Dr. Hinshaw because I have to answer questions in question period right now. Thank you. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Thank you. Julia Wong, Global News. Hi, this question is for Dr. Hinshaw and Minister Shandro. How come the names of the pharmacies doing asymptomatic testing have not been publicly released? What's the point of having this testing available if Albertans don't know which pharmacies are offering it and have to call or drive around to figure that out themselves? And if it's meant to relieve pressure off of the AHS sites, which are seeing very high demand, how do you expect that to happen unless those names are released? 
That's absolutely uh, an important point. We have been having discussions about how we can release that information. The original intent of the pharmacy testing, that first group of locations where testing was happening, was to pilot that particular way of testing and to allow those particular locations to work with Alberta Health Services and the lab to make sure that we were working out the protocols and we wanted to make sure that those particular locations didn't get overwhelmed with demand as they were working out those early uh, processes. So we are looking now at having a process where those pharmacies that have been participating in any more that come online can be listed. And uh, so that, that again, that work is, is underway to be able to do that. And that will hopefully help Albertans know which pharmacies are participating and we are able to use the information gathered from the pilot that's been happening over the last week and a half to inform the uh, better processes, to inform improvement in process as we go forward with adding any others. And Minister Chandro, did you want to add to that? Uh, thank you. And, and yes, that's exactly right. It is a pilot program right now. We want to make sure that the pilot program is working um, without those uh, pharmacies being overwhelmed. But also just to make the point that these pharmacies are not a replacement for the assessment centers and the work that's being done there. This is a pilot program to see if it's going to work in the future. Um, but we would encourage folks, if they are looking for a test, make sure you're going uh, to the assessment centers or um, reaching out to, uh, to AHS to, to be um, getting one done through one of their um, assessment centers or otherwise. Okay, we have time for three more. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Thank you, Michelle Bel Belfontaine, CBC. Oh, hi there. Um, this is probably a question for either Dr. Hinshaw or Minister Sandro. Let's ask you about Sylvan Lake. Um, and of course, you know, what happened on Saturday um, and the town of Sylvan Lake uh, put out a release um, suggesting that they neither have the jurisdiction nor the resources to control crowds and only the RCMP or Alberta Health can help them with it and that they're looking for guidance and help. So what kind of guidance and help should the province offer a place like Sylvan Lake? And we've also heard that Alberta Beach was also quite, uh, quite crowded this weekend. Well, I, uh, b before I uh, let uh, you know, uh, ask uh, Dr. Hinshaw to come come up and uh, supplement this answer, I, I would say that we do right now have the uh, the orders of the Chief Medical Officer of Health, and we have made changes to the Public Health Act to uh, to allow for um, uh, to to help with uh, local communities to be able to enforce uh, some of those orders. But uh, Dr. Hinshaw, if you want to. Thank you, yes. Uh, we're aware, as you mentioned, that there have been a couple of locations that have had a lot of crowds gathering. And so that's something that this week we're going to be having some discussions with locations that have indicated that they want to have conversations with us. And so I think it would be premature to talk about specifics or, or how we could um, give any additional assistance. We have, as Minister Chandra mentioned, put in place orders that are enforceable by law enforcement as well as guidance and guidelines for operators of different businesses and locations. Uh, but recognize that there are some locations, and Sylvan Lake, as you mentioned, is an example, uh, where there are challenges. And so we will be setting up conversations this week to see how we can work together to make sure that the local um, municipalities and other groups uh, have the support that we're able to provide and that we can think through solutions that are locally appropriate. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Yes, Carrie Tate, Globe and Mail. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, this is for Minister Shandro. I'm wondering um, who Alberta is speaking with in the federal government now that you've Google and Apple have told you that that's where the problem is in fixing the Alberta app. And um, if there's a timeline on when that might get solved and if there's a national app, whether um, Alberta traced together, uh, whether you'll fold that. Well, uh, as Premier said, there, there is no national uh, contact tracing app at this time, and we have been asked, and uh, one of our uh, assistant deputy ministers is uh, taking the lead on, on um, assisting the federal government in the development of it, because they um, uh, are, are not 
um, you know, even for, for first steps, uh, they, they did turn to us to, to help them with that development. Um, uh, but, you know, who do we talk to? Um, it is uh, through um, our counterparts in the, uh, the Ministry of Health, as well as uh, through Deputy Minister Volk, who's uh, with uh, Intergovernmental Affairs, um, uh, for her and reaching out to uh, her colleagues in uh, the federal government um, to be able to continue with our requests uh, for uh, the, the federal government, as Premier said, to, uh, to allow Google and, and Apple to be able to work with um, us and uh, make sure that uh, we can um, have the AB trace together uh, working. Um, happy though, it, you know, if we're going to be asked to to help them in the development of uh, of another app, that's fine. But look, let's um, allow Google and and uh, and Apple to work with us to make sure that the AB Trace Together app is um, um, is fully functional. And uh, we're happy to to do that once uh, Google and, and and Apple are allowed to do that. Okay, we have time for one more operator. Can you please put through the last caller? Thank you, Sarah Plowman, CTV. Hi, this is a question for Minister Shandro. Um, some people are voicing concerns that there are about 200 doctor positions posted on a recruiting website right now at a time when doctors say their working environment is very toxic here. Um, is the province recruiting other doctors because it's anticipating an exodus of doctors? And can you give us some context about whether 200 vacant jobs is unusual, whether you're concerned at all? Well. Uh, first, let me say um, how shameful it is and how disappointed I am that somebody would refer to our international medical graduates in this province as, uh, as scabs. I think that is disrespectful. It's shameful behavior. Um, we have about 10,800 physicians in this province, a third of them. A third of them are international medical graduates. And in any given year, the, the uh, physicians who become accredited with the college are also going to be about a third IMGs. Um, they're, they're an important part of, of our health system and they deserve that respect that they, uh, well, um, that they deserve. Um, look, the uh, AHS in, in any given year uh, does, does recruit for physician positions. Um, but uh, look, these 179 positions that are advertised for is, uh, is fewer than in previous years. Um, so um, I, I think that uh, what's happening here is um, uh, a false narrative that's, uh, that's trying to, to be developed, um, uh, I suppose, as a pressure tactic. Uh, and uh, look, I, I would encourage the Alberta Medical Association to, uh, to, to work with government, and we look forward to um, uh, working with them on a proposal um, if uh, having a master agreement is important to them, having a proposal from them which addresses our major concern that the $5.4 billion that we pay in physician compensation and we're budgeting for, for compensation for our physicians, which is the highest level in the history of this province, the highest on a per capita basis in this country, um, that we can hold the line on that spending. And because um, uh, quite frankly, the previous framework um, we projected had uh, cost overruns of uh, up to $2 billion in the next three years. So um, we, we look forward to working with the Alberta Medical Association when they want to come to us with a proposal that's going to address that major concern that we have. Okay, and that concludes today's press conference. Thank, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone.